Okay, so uh, a couple of months ago, the Department of Premier and Cabinet in Victoria, uh, DPC, uh, went live with a platform called My Victoria, and I'm going to take you through the project. Uh, I've got quite a bit to get through in 15 minutes. Uh, I'll do a brief demo towards the end. Uh, the site is public, so you can all go on and have a good look after the presentation. Uh, so let's start at the project brief. Uh, the Victorian government made public, make public a range of data, um, but the value of the data to this point hasn't been fully realised uh, due to a number of reasons that might not be a surprise. Um, data being supplied by different departments, uh, exposed from different locations, uh, in different raw formats. And this situation makes it quite onerous uh, to extract value from this open data. So DPC, through their research, identified a group that would have great benefit in gaining access to the information contained in the data, uh, that group being small to medium business owners. Small to medium business owners don't have the skills or time to sort through different open data locations, convert formats, uh, overlay data and find insight that could allow them to make a better business decision. Uh, this is a diagram of the data available to My Victoria that the DPC data team put together. And it illustrates one of the barriers um, to gaining this insight of having a variety of places for open data. The goal, to simplify the navigation of data uh, and make information more accessible to bridge the gap between data and insight. Uh, to help DPC achieve this goal, a multidisciplinary team was assembled across a few entities to deliver a high value product to the community. The prime contractor was Today, a purpose-first company to deliver positive outcomes for society and environment. <coughs> Today specialised in human-centred design. Uh, the lead designer on this project for today, Callan, uh, we had planned for him to present this part of the presentation with me, um, but I think he's in Bali at the moment, so uh, I'll do uh, his slides on his behalf. Uh, Geoplex were brought on to do the AWS infrastructure, the map and data components, uh, which is in our wheelhouse. Um, so on to the design process, which was led by today. Uh, it was quite extensive and an eye-opener for our company. Um, I don't have time to go through each step, uh, so I've picked out a couple key steps that I thought was interesting and relevant to uh, a spatial audience. Uh, this is another representation of the design process, which you may or may not be able to relate to. <coughs> All right, so in the first stage of the design, uh, Callan did a landscape review of a bunch of different mapping websites. And it was in quite interesting to get an outsider's view of how they were broken down. Um, from the websites reviewed, uh, map UI archetypes emerged. Uh, there were four archetypes identified. The first being the geographic listing uh, with a search and results list with some drop pins. Um, the best example would be uh, Google Maps. The next archetype was called area summary, uh, which adds summarized contextual information of an area. Uh, an example of an area summary site similar in scope to My Victoria was the My London site. A variation on the area summary archetype was the non-spatial area summary with no map and live in Melbourne, an example of this. Uh, an archetype was assigned for showing overlapping polygon data called zones and land checker was cited as an example. And finally, the data sandbox, uh, where you can choose to add data sets from a list. I would have described this as desktop GIS in a browser, but I like the term data sandbox. 
Um, national map, I'm guessing most of you would be familiar with uh, as an example of this. Uh, so those are just a subset of the slides from the landscape review. Um, there were pros and cons for each archetype when displaying different types of data. Uh, and had I had more time, I would have included them. Um, but the result of all this, uh, the area summary archetype was chosen as the template for My Victoria. Uh, the other stage in the design process I thought was worth mentioning was the co-design. Uh, so this is a photo from the co-design which involves getting small and medium business owners into today's studio, testing different ideas, finding out what information the target audience wanted and how they wanted it presented. So in the co-design of the 60 plus data sets, uh, some were identified as more desirable than others. Uh, the horizontal axis there being development effort uh, so unfortunately for us, there was nothing in the uh, easy and uh, highly desirable. Um, also, how small and medium business owners thought about navigating through the data was tested. Uh, and the results were starting out at an area, being either suburb, LGA or region. Um, then browsing down through the data themes uh, and getting more detailed as you progress into those data themes. Uh, so all of that amounted to the initial design of the platform. So uh, while today was off doing that, we were developing the back-end infrastructure, uh, the map client, and also helping the DBC data team to prepare, to prepare the data for the front end. Um, so this is a representation uh, of our stack. I'll go into it a little bit more detail shortly. Um, a key part of delivering the infrastructure was through code. Uh, there are many benefits to using cloud infrastructure. Um, these are just a handful that we got by using tools like AWS Cloud Formation to build out the machines, auto scaling groups to meet demand and to make sure everything was up and running, uh, and CloudFront was used to make the site very responsive by uh, caching the responses. All right, so I'll do a quick demo just to give you a feel for the map component before going into the stack. Um, so this is the home page uh, and a uh, search bar. I'll um, have a search for Parkville. Ah, oh, we're still doing this thing, are we? All right, um, let's stop this. Let's try, uh, that one looks good. All right, so searching into Parkville. So once you search for an area, you land on the area overview page. Um, so you get a summary of each of the data themes um, on the left, you can scroll through. Um, you can then navigate into uh, a data theme, so we'll go into demographics, which is primarily the census data. You get some more information, um, so we've got total population, um, and then we have another level, so you can go into these data blocks um, to get, uh, in this case, population by age and sex. Um, and each expanded data block has an accompanying map. Um, so this shows um, high, low, relative um, population for surrounding suburbs. Um, and you can also interact um, with different suburbs to get a quick comparison of, uh, in this example, total population. Um, you can also change if you want to see more detail, so if you want to um, have the expanded data block for a, a neighbouring suburb, you can change this area through the map. Um, and in this demographics we have um, two types of styles, so we have the categorised, sorry this is the, uh, what do I call them, the gradients? I think we're going with gradient for these maps with the continuous data and the categorised we've got for the discrete data. So for households here, we've got more of a categorised um, with the yeah, identifier. So that's the basic feel of the map components. Um, many different uh, maps in this demographic data theme, breakdowns and so forth. Going back 
So this. All right, so the stack uh, for the database, PostGS on PostgreSQL on AWS Relational Database Service, um, GeoServer using WS for the data blocks, so all of the expanded uh, information on the left was through WFS, um, WMTS with vector tile format for the map data, so they're all downloaded into the client. Uh, we then use open layers uh, with the OL map box style module for styling. Um, and then the base map, uh, map box. Uh, and then also just some custom comp components for the uh, identify and legend. Um, the last part of the presentation is some of the styling specifics when using map box vector tiles in open layers. Um, so GeoServer supports map box styles with the MB styles extension. Um, and one of the ways you can create those Mapbox styles is in QGIS with the boundless plugin called Mapbox GL QGIS. Uh, so you can export your styles uh, and then store them in GeoServer. Um, and then in open layers, you can use the boundless module to style the open layers with the style function. Um, so that's the process that I went through for all those demographic maps. Uh, but when the design came through for the industry team, uh, there were about 30,000 styles that were requested. Uh, so I went back to the drawing board and tried to figure out a way to replicate uh, that process in QGIS programmatically in real time, because I wasn't going to make them all manually. Um, so similar to demographics, there are two types of maps in the industry themes. Um, an industry count that uses the graduated style and a top subcategory sub that uses the categorised style. Uh, the graduated maps had static colours but needed a dynamic classification. So something to simulate clicking classify uh, and getting the break values. Uh, so I found a Postgres classification function that Cardo wrote which performs a natural classification. Uh, I then connected that to a GeoServer parameter view. Um, calling that parameter view with the industry parameters returns the break values needed. Uh, those break values are then loaded into a style template and that got the gradient maps working. So thanks, Cardo, for that function. Um, the categorised maps had a different requirement in that there were an unknown number of colours needed uh, for each of those maps. And I wanted the colours from the map evenly distributed amongst a colour ramp. Um, so in this example here, there's many different classifications, so the colours from the colour ramp are very close together. Um, but if you only had a couple of uh, colours, then I would just want them from the ends, just to give us uh, as distinct colours possible from the one colour ramp. Um, so I found Fiddle that someone had posted which returns a colour from a position in the colour ramp. So you can slide that um, cursor across the colour ramp and it'll give you um, the colour. Um, modified that to take in account uh, and return the number of colours spread out evenly across the, across the colour ramp. Uh, we again uh, load those into the style template and with the open layers map box style function. Um, <coughs> load the industry map. So I can show you that just to show you it's working. Um, so I mean, I might just go back to Parkville. If I come out of the demographics and I'll go into the industry. Um, so this is the primarily WorkSafe data. Um, and you can either type in or browse through the WorkSafe classification. So if I go into, oh, go into one that's got, I can just, so the total count, so this is doing that um, break values classification on the fly. Um, so that gives us uh, the style needed for that map and then the industry breakdown this is the categorised one. In this example, there are only a couple of possible values. So I'm picking two colours from the outside of the colour ramp, um, but then going down into the next level um, has 
many more colours, so still spreading out those colours in the colour ramp. Um, so finally, uh, a tip of the cap to Mapbox Studio for the base maps. Um, with Mapbox Studio, we were able to tailor our base maps um, and just adds uh, a nice transition when we're in some of the other data themes. Uh, I'll just show you that because it's quite nice. Uh, so if I come back out to the area overview, you'll get the generic base map. And then if you want to go in and have a look at something like plan government projects, we uh, change that to some more sort of grayscale. So um, that's pretty much the presentation. Uh, how to do for time. Back on. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. So uh, how do you keep the data up to date? Um, so DPC have a data team that uh, is in the process of regularly trying to automate as much as they can, but yeah, they do have um, people um, on staff that is, their role is to keep the data up to date. Oh, and uh, how many um, daily queries do you get on the website? Uh, they only launched it a couple months ago and it was kind of a soft launch, so um, I would have to go in and have a look at some of the analytics to, to tell you that, um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not getting hit too hard just yet. How are you going to uh, make this available? It's obviously available. Are, are you advertising it at all? Like, how, how are you getting the word out there? Like, uh, so I, presenting it. Yeah. Last I heard that um, yeah that they were hoping to do a much broader launch um, towards the end of the year. So um, yeah, it's I mean it's public now, so you can all go on to myvictoria.vic.gov.au have a look. But um, yeah, hopefully oh. it gets a bit more. I can see my students using it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>